Jamie said before the video, Brett Favre at Green Bay. That just sounds weird. <laughs> Welcome into Fantasy Football. Glad to see you. I'm Lauren Shadi alongside Jamie Eisenberg. This preview brought to you by Norton, denier of digital dangers everywhere. Brett Favre, the matchup he's been waiting for, gets to go to Lambeau, and you like it. I got to watch what I say. You may be quoting me That's another right. Thing. My goodness. Camera's always on. Brett Favre has a great matchup. This is what he came back for twice. He retired twice to come back to make sure he gets at least one game at Lambeau Field. Let's not be fooling ourselves here. Brett Favre, Green Bay, I mean, that goes together like, what, America and apple pie? You talk about Brett Favre has a steakhouse in Green Bay. He has a street named after him in Green Bay. What does that matter, Jamie? Let's hope after this week he has a big game <laughs> named against after him? Green Bay. I think you're going to see him play well. We all saw what he did in the first matchup against the Packers in Minnesota. 271 yards passing, three touchdowns. The Packers did not come close to touching him. No sacks in that game. Packers secondary is not as good as the numbers suggest because the last two games they've beaten up on some cake opponents in Detroit and Cleveland. I think you'll see that Favre should go in and play well again. He's been pretty good for the most part this season. I think you like to say he's been money. So I think you'll see Brett Favre <laughs> go back and play at a high level. And he has a steakhouse. So hey, you got to start him, right? Do a lot of these fantasy owners have enough talent that they can sit Frank Gore? Jamie says if you can, do it. Yeah, Frank Gore is going to struggle this week. If you take out the two big runs that he had against Seattle, he's been pretty mediocre. He's been averaging almost two something, two point something yards per carry uh, for the majority of the season. When you take away those two big runs, he had an 80 yard touchdown run and a 79 yard touchdown run. But for the most part, he's been pretty mediocre. He had a tough game last week against Houston. I think that ankle problem is still a concern and he's facing an Indianapolis team that has been pretty good against the run this year. They get Bob Sanders back last week. That's only gonna make the run defense better. And as expected, if the Colts go up big in this game, they're not going to be allowed to run the ball because they'll be pl playing from behind and throwing the ball. So I think if you're looking at Frank Gore, if you're looking for some people to play in place of him, LaShawn McCoy is probably available this week. Beanie Wells is somebody you can use this week. Sean Green, who we talked about in the waiver wire. These are some guys you can probably use if they're available or you drafted them or picked them up. In place of a guy like Frank Gore, these guys have better outlooks. Or if Beanie Wells can hang on to the ball, right, Jamie? Because Beanie that's Wells. what all the fantasy owners need him to do. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's talk about Pierre Thomas. He is now sharing carries with Mike Bell. Reggie Bush is still there. What does this mean for fantasy owners? Well, I think you got to look at Pierre Thomas, Mike Bell, and Reggie Bush. They're all going to split time. And the interesting thing is that Reggie Bush is the one who's getting the least amount of carries, but he has two touchdowns in the last two games. Mike Bell is going to be the guy, though, that I think that's really going to hurt Pierre Thomas. That's been the case the last two weeks. He's got a touchdown, got over 80 yards rushing last week against the Dolphins. So his last two games, he's outproduced him when you talk about fantasy points. So Pierre Thomas just struggling at this point. I think at some point he's going to be back to being a useful fantasy option again. But just the way the things are going right now, the way it's shaking out, I would sit Pierre Thomas this week. Let's keep in mind, Atlanta has been actually really good against opposing running backs. They've only given up one 100-yard rusher this year, and that was to Fred Taylor. So I think you've seen the way that they played. Did a good job against Matt Forte, did a good job against Ronnie Brown in week one, and did a good job against Marion Barber last week. So I think you look at Pierre Thomas, we know the Saints are going to be throwing in this game. Thomas is someone I would sit if you can afford to do so. When you talk about matchups and when you talk about history, David Garrard against the Titans, that's good history, Jamie. Oh, absolutely. It's great history. You know, you look at the, the matchup these two teams had earlier this season. Garrard threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns also just for the fun of it, chipped in 38 yards rushing. So I think you'll see Garrard come out in this game, continue to play well. Tennessee, even coming off the bye week, they still lead the NFL in passing touchdowns allowed with 19. So I don't think their secondary is going to be fixed. The one thing to keep in mind is that Garrard has struggled on the road this year, but his last road game, was, if you remember, was at Seattle when he did not have Mike Sims-Walker for that matchup. So I think you'll see Garrard come into this game, play well. I like the Jaguars this week. I think you can use Mike Sims-Walker, as we'll see, with the start wide receivers. Torrey Holden, nice sleeper. Mercedes Lewis is a good option this week at tight end. And, of course, you're starting Maurice Jones-Drew. You know, I saw your next graphic, and I'm a little bit nervous. I can't sit Matt Ryan. I have Carson Palmer. He's on a bye. What do I do? I have to go with him, right? I, I think you do. you got to go with, uh, with Matt Ryan in case you don't have any other options. But when you talk about bad matchups and situations where it's not going to be a good scenario, this is a bad situation for Matt Ryan because teams that have gone into New Orleans this year, the quarterback play has not been very good. The last two quarterbacks to go into New Orleans, Mark Sanchez, Eli Manning, they've been turnover prone. The Saints have done a great job uh, against opposing quarterbacks this year. They actually are tied for the NFL lead in interceptions with 13. Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator. Darren Sharper has really made a big difference in that secondary, and I think you'll see Matt Ryan struggle. He's been real turnover prone the last few weeks. I think he has five uh, turnovers altogether in his last three games. So he's just not getting it done, not 
giving you the type of production that you can really expect. Again, it's hard to bench him, Lauren. You know, we talked about this off the air. I'm surprised you didn't mention it. That I have to actually start <laughs> Matt Ryan in one of my leagues as well, just like you do. It's it's not going to be a, a scenario where you have a lot of good options to replace a guy like Matt Ryan. But I think you just still start him and just lower your expectations. You're going to start Braylon Edwards. That's what Jamie says because the Dolphins are missing their cornerback, Will Allen. So he's going to take it to the house. That's what I say. Yeah, I think so. I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't say he's money. So I think you look at Braylon Edwards. Last time he played the, played the Dolphins was his first game with the Jets. He had his best fantasy day, 12 fantasy points. And you mentioned no Will Allen in there, so he's probably going to be dealing with two rookie cornerbacks, either Avante Davis or Sean Smith. That's going to give him a huge advantage playing at home. And the other thing about this is that Jericho Cotri is expected to play coming back from that hamstring injury. So we'll probably see a lot less coverage in Edwards' direction like what has happened the last couple of weeks. So I think Edwards is a very solid number two fantasy wide receiver. You can start him this week. I like him to be money or take it to the house as your new expressions are starting to roll in here. But you don't like Hakeem Nix. And you know what? If I were Hakeem Nix and I was watching this video, I bet he does, I would be like, what do I have to do, Jamie? Four touchdowns in the last four weeks. What more do you want? From well, him? he's been absolutely fantastic. And, you know, it's hard to argue against the production. However, when you look at how he's got those four touchdowns, that's where I think you've got to sort of take a step back and say, can this continue? Because last week against the Cardinals, that was a fluke play, 62-yard touchdown after Dominique rogers Cromartie, the cornerback for Arizona, tipped the ball. Nix was just in the right fluke place schmoop. at the right time, <laughs> scored the touchdown there. I think you've got to look and say, can that happen again? Yes, I don't it's think happened so. In the last four weeks. He had a, a, a broken play touchdown in his first, first touchdown against Kansas City, and one of those touchdowns also came from David Carr in garbage time. He's facing a tough Eagle secondary. Steve Smith is still the best wide receiver. Dave and I disagree on this, but Steve Smith is going to be the better Giants wide receiver this week, and I just think that the Eagles will take Akeem Nix out of the equation. He's not going to score five in a row. Nix is money. For Jamie Eisenberg, I'm Lauren Shahadi. Watch fantasy football today every Sunday, 11 o'clock for two hours. We'll talk to you soon.